Don't be afraid to cut workouts short if you're not feeling it. Okay, I wanna give you some big picture insights about overreaching and overtraining as I will continue to provide more details, especially getting into the various symptoms that will help you uh, become more aware and take corrective action when these symptoms appear. Uh, first thing though, is that it's essential to cultivate an intuitive approach to training. You're allowed to write up schedules. You are allowed to focus on the particulars and the specifics at each workout. For example, the runners heading to the track and doing eight times 400 with this much rest and trying to hit this interval or the swimmers where the entire workout is uh, highly regimented with the time clock and the send off times and the different goals of the workout preparing for race ready. However, overriding all that and overseeing all that is an intuitive approach where you are checking in with yourself every day and monitoring things like real time energy and motivation levels, as well as symptoms of health, even tiny little minor symptoms of subpar immune function are enough to absolutely tank your well-chosen and well-designed schedule in favor of backing off and resting. And that's a really tough one for highly motivated, goal-oriented, type A driven competitive performers where everything needs to be quantified, just like all the other areas in life where that approach has helped us succeed. Of course, I got through law school and passed the bar exam by studying for 8.2 hours per day for six weeks and did all this and wrote it down on a spreadsheet. See, want to see my fantastic spreadsheet? This is how I succeed in life. And here's my budget spreadsheet so I can uh, balance my checkbook really well. We want to have that, uh, that, that, that certainty in all areas of life. But when it comes to athletics and the dynamic human organism that's trying really hard to get fitter and achieve these goals, that's when you need to inject some sort of uh, sensibility and reasoning and reflection into every single workout. I took this to almost a laughable extreme in my triathlon career, whereby, of course, before every workout, I would sit with myself and ask myself if this was a sensible and correct decision for the day. A lot of times I would visualize the route. So if I woke up on Tuesday morning and it was my day on the schedule to do a 12 mile run in the canyon, I would actually envision that route and myself running down the hill and crossing the bridge at the bottom and then crossing the road and then going up the narrow trail onto the, 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 the fatter fire road and taking it all the way up to the train tracks and back to the house. And I would envision how that felt for my body that day before I set out to do it. And a lot of times that was helpful to uh, bring me to uh, a better decision where maybe I'll just jog three miles down the train track and turn around because I am pretty sore and tired today. And in the middle of workouts, I would often check in with myself, such as on long bike rides where there was a fork in the road. And if you turn this way, you were descending down a very steep hill to the bottom of the canyon, uh, requiring a pretty tough climb to get out of there. Or if you turn the other way, you could coast back down to home for a nap. And a lot of times when I got to the Chevron gas station in Colfax, I would decide, you know what, today is not my day for the super duper death ride. I'm going to go home and uh, nap for a couple hours and take it easy. So I had like a uh, a 66 or 75% success rate with workout completion when I was one of the top triathletes in the world. And that was absolutely one of my strengths that allowed me to rise to the best level of my potential because I was not leaving uh, a lot of gas and a lot of competitive potential on the training ground, which was happening with so many other athletes where, hey, it's Tuesday, we got to finish the whole loop so we can be tough and strong mentally and uh, continue to prepare as expected uh, to peak at this big race uh, weeks or months later. That's not how the body works. You can try your hardest to design a good schedule, but it all comes down to intuition in the end to make the best decisions in real time, all the time. Don't be afraid to cut workouts short if you're not feeling it. Now, what's really cool about being fully immersed and fully committed to the intuitive approach was that many times, because I had that freedom and that free-flowing intuitive uh, responsibility governing all my training decisions, there were also quite a few workouts where I went far beyond 
my previous expectations because I was free to do so. You see what I mean? So if I set the intention to uh, do a 100-mile bike ride one day, but I felt really great at mile 80, I would keep pedaling and make it 120 or 140. And these were some of my most favorite and most memorable workouts that I believe were true breakthrough experiences to where I finished and had a, and was going to ascend to a higher level of fitness, not to mention self-confidence because I allowed myself that intuitive decision-making to keep going, keep pushing it rather than being satisfied with a hundred miles because that's what I wrote down in my schedule book beforehand. Do you get the difference? Oh my gosh, I, I can't say enough about those breakthrough workouts where I just decided to explore yet another mountain pass that was going to be a 30 minute climb instead of turning around and saying, yep, got my workout done for the day. Just like, hey, I emptied out my email inbox today, so I've succeeded in an, a successful accomplished workday. Um, it's a big, big difference when you just go with the flow better and allow yourself the freedom to not only curtail sessions when you don't feel great, but to go for it and blow the doors off of what you previously thought you were capable of. Okay, so the intuitive approach is everything for every athlete at all levels. Sometimes I get pushback here from novices saying, well, Brad, that's easy for you because you're experienced and you know how, to, you know how your body works and you can make good decisions. But everyone has a highly refined intuition for what is the right thing to do every single day in every way. That includes how we interact in relationships and with kids, with parents, uh, with coworkers, and also the training decisions. So when you <laughs> hear that alarm going and get in the car and are driving over to the gym for a 6 a.m. workout, but you feel your throat scratchy and your left knee is throbbing, your intuition is screaming at you, please turn the F around and go back to sleep but you refuse to listen to it because after all, it's Tuesday and your training partners are waiting for you in the gym room or whatever else is going through your mind, the insecurities, the fears, and the obsession with adhering to a rigid schedule. These are the things that get in our way and sabotage our success. So let go, be free, and go with the flow and make the right decisions every day, especially when it comes to tiptoeing into those uh, overtraining risk factors.